just because we're so great, everybody should be able to look at X now and say X is just the square root of what? Come on, X is the square root of what? 21. 21, thank you very much. X is the square root of 21. Anybody have any problems with that? What? How did you get that? Do you know the Pythagorean theorem? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever. What? Let it be 29. Why am I wrong? Because five is the hypotenuse, not the leg. Oh. All right. Now we can do short leg, long leg if you want. We could say two over the square root of 21. Two is the short leg, square root of 21 is the long leg. Then we could say what? Yes. The short leg would be X and um, the long leg would be uh oh, which is the square root of 21. Sorry about that. Square root of 21 over y. Is everybody good with that? So 2y equals 21. So y equals 21 over 2. Everybody good with that? And now look at z, please. So how can I find z easily? 21 over 2 plus 2. Yeah, 21 over 2 plus 2. Hey, Oliver, you guys, I'm not sure what y'all are doing. No, you're not. All right. So Z is equal to 21 over 2 plus 2, which is just what? Thank you. 25 over 2. All right. That, again, is a review of that information. All right, that's the review of uh, right triangles, similar right triangles. So let's go ahead and knock out number two. So personally for me, here's the one where I would just go ahead and say what Y is, right? Anytime I see two sides of a right triangle, I just automatically refer to A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's how I would like for you to do it. All right, you can set up the proportions if you want, you'll get the same answer. But everybody should look at nine or number Y and everybody should be able to look at Y and say, that's just what? Radical 13. All right. Now let's figure out what X is. I need a proportion for X. X over three, long leg to short leg, long leg to short leg, two X equals nine. So X equals nine over two. So again, kind of the same principle Z, we can just go ahead and do as what? What? Yes. 9 over 2, wait a minute, 9 over 2 plus 2, right? So it'd be what? Thank you, 13 over 2. Anybody have any issues with that? All right, short leg, long leg, hypotenuse. All right, now we're just looking at some of the Pythagorean theorem stuff. All right, if I'm looking here at number 3, what is X obviously? We don't have to do Pythagorean theorem here, guys. Uh, 50, 40, what what is what are the triples again? Everybody put on this part. What are the triples? Three, four, five. Three, four, five. What's the other one? Three, five, seven, twelve, thirteen, eight, fifteen, seventeen, seven, twenty-four, twenty-five. All right, those are really helpful. So if I'm looking at this, what is X now? 
45. Of course, you can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but I would prefer you know that's nine times what? Three, nine times four. So this must have been nine times five. Everybody good with that? All right, so let's look at this down here. All right, so how much from here to here, guys? 10. 10. All right, I don't see that this is a triple, but I do know there's a common two, agreed? So this is, everybody write this, two times nine. So this is going to be what? Two times five. So X has to be two times something. And now we're just going to use the what? The nine and the five. Is that a triple? No, nine is not going to be the hypotenuse. So now we have the hypotenuse and a leg. So what's nine squared? 81. What's five squared? So that's 81 minus 25. And of course, 81 minus 25 is 56. Thank you very much. And so X now is equal to two square root 56. But of course, 56 is a perfect square, right? You can break it down. What perfect square is in 56? Four times 14. And so my final answer is X equals, come on, four radical 14. Four radical 14. Anybody have any issues with that? Okay. So X is obviously what? How do we know it's eight? It's a triple, eight, 15, 17. All right, let's scroll down, see what's up. Okay, acute, right, obtuse. What are we saying? Or how do we determine whether it's acute, right, or, well, first of all, how do we determine if it's right? If what? Yes, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it is considered right. Now, what happens if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared? Yeah, it's obtuse. And if c squared is what? less than a squared plus b squared, it's considered what? Acute. All right, now, we also must check for what? Yeah, the sum of the, yes, thank you very much for that. The sum of the two smaller legs must be greater than the third side. All right, the sum of the two smaller sides must be greater than the third side. That has to be checked first. Everybody with me on that? Everybody with me? All right, now I feel like I, it would probably be better for me to just scroll down and go over the rules. And then you can apply the rules for homework. All right, I, I don't, I don't want to do the work. All right, I, I feel like because it's long, all right, It'd be helpful if you reminded yourself what the individual rules for, for the particular parts of the test. And then you go back and see if you can remember how to do it based off of the information or the formulas. All right. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down now until we get to. Now, anytime they mention a square, the length of the diagonal of a square, what are they actually referring to? What kind of triangles are created? 
Yes, but specifically what kind of triangle of a right tri yes, it's an isosceles right triangle. So what are the measure of the angles? And what are the diagonals do to the angles? So what are the degrees? 45, 45, 90. All right. So in a 45, 45, 90, does anybody remember the rules for that? Now notice it says exact perimeter. Reason why it says exact perimeter is because a radical is involved. What radical is involved in a 45, 45, 90, Tanner? Um, when you go from the leg to the hypotenuse, you get a times by radical two. That is so correct. Get, and then when you go from the hypotenuse to the legs, you get a times by radical. Exactly. Radical two is involved. A radical two is involved. And normally on a standardized test, on the SATs, they show you this is X, this is X, and this is X radical 2. All right. Now, the easy way, remember, was if you're going from a smaller side to a larger side, you got to multiply. If you're going from larger to smaller, you divide. All right. I also told kids that there's a 45, 45, 90. So there's two different angles. So the radical 2 is involved. Right. In a 30, 60, 90, you can put these rules. There's going to be a what involved? A radical three involved. All right. So we said from the 90 to the 30, we divide by two, which means from the 30 to the 90, what do we do? Multiply by two. And remember, these are the angles. And then we have from the 30 to the 60, what do we do? Multiply. That's right. Multiply by radical three. And I told the kids, remember, it's three because there are three different angles, 30, 60, 90. So a radical three was involved in the 30, 60, 90. Radical two was involved in the 45, 45, 90. All right. So from 30 to 60, you multiply by radical three. Then if you say from 60 to 30, I would just do what? Divide by radical three. All right, those are the rules for 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. And notice it says exact, all right, because we don't really need this because we know trig now, all right? But those rules are important because you can't use your calculator to find the exact, if that makes sense, because a radical uh, three or a radical two is involved. So over here, these are all just the rules for what? These are the rules for the 45. And then we come to the rules for the 30 and the 60. All right. An equilateral triangle is how we came up with the what? What kind of triangle is created on the 36 or on the equilateral triangle? Yes, yeah, a 60, 60, 60. But then when you bisect an angle, that's how it was created, the 30, 60, 90. All right, so just in case you want to see what's going on here, you can kind of try to draw an equilateral triangle. And then what I'd like for you to try to do is try to draw for yourself the height. And then when you draw the height, you should be able to see that's how the 30, 60, 90 is created. All right. Uh, that, that's like I said, on all standardized tests. All right. The information about the 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90. All right. Now here on 18, all right, we have the definition. Somebody tell me the definition for sine of theta. What is the sine of theta defined as? Tell me. Opposite over. Yes, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is defined as what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And then, of course, tangent is defined as? Opposite over adjacent. Opposite, thank you, over adjacent. All right, don't be confused by the trig. Now, what's nice about this right triangle? I have a 17 and a 15. So that means it's a Pythagorean what? Triple. 
All right, so go ahead and put 17 down. And then put 15 down. And then the other side is what? Eight. Eight. Now, just for your own and for my satisfaction, I want you to write theta is given. So I want you to write on the triangle what is opposite, what is adjacent, and what is hypotenuse. All right. What is opposite, what is adjacent, and what is hypotenuse? All right. If you can do that, then the trig is simple. 17 is called the 15 is called the opposite and eight is called the what now if we were looking at angle c does the hypotenuse change no no but the adjacent now becomes the what and the opposite becomes the that's where it causes problems that's what i'm saying you have to know the reference all right what angle all right are you referring to that determines what's the opposite and what's the adjacent all right now here for 19 everybody should be able to look at 19 and tell me what trig function are we going to use to find x Cosine, because again, you should just automatically write down 29 is the hypotenuse, X is the adjacent, adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So cosine, after you write a trig function, the angle must be written next. 29 equals A over 29. All right, is everybody good with that? And now you can solve it. All right, now I'm looking for an angle. All right, make yourself a note. Whenever you're looking for an angle, that's when you must use what? Inverse. All right, you need to use the inverse trig function when you're looking for an angle. Inverse trig function when you're looking for an angle. And once again, I always like to highlight the angle and then see what the two sides are. All right, it's not the hypotenuse. So for 20, we're going to use what trig function? Tangent. Tangent, that is correct. All right, tangent of B is equal to 14 over eight. And that's when you have to use your inverse trig function. All right, scrolling down. The measure of the angle of elevation. All right, so if you're thinking about the angle of elevation from the horizon, all right, your angle of elevation is created moving up, obviously. All right, so this would be considered your angle of elevation. Okay, more just drawings to set up your trig functions. More drawings to set up your trig function. Another angle of elevation. Okay, who remembers what the formula for area of a triangle is now? Yes, the area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. The problem is we do not have the height. We do not have the height. So we're using a trig substitution. We said that the area of a triangle is one half A, B, sine C. All right, that's the formula. A equals one half A, B, sine C. Now remember, this must be a side angle side which means the angle must be between the two sides. Is this, is that angle between the two sides? Yeah. Now, how do we know that's true? Because if you draw it out, 
right? If you draw it out, let's say you're having a little bit of trouble, this would be C, this would be side C. And the other two angles don't matter because this would be A and B. So we have A, we have B, and we have angle C. So that is what we we're looking for, side, angle, side. Now, the easy way for me to remember that was just all three of these letters have to be what? Different. If all three of the letters are different, then you're in good shape. Anybody have any questions with that? That's the formula for area. Now we're trying to find angle F. So highlight, all right, we're looking for angle F. Now I have side what? D and I have side what? E. So at the top of your paper, you should be able to say law of sine and then law of cosine. The law of cosine is used for side, 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 or side, angle, side. Your law of sine is used when you know an angle and opposite side. That's how you tell the difference between which ones. Now, to me, I never had to memorize that because I always opted for law of sine because it was the easy one. And there's no way to use the law of sine for this. The reason why I say there's no way is because as I mark it, this is 19.4. Uh, e is 19.7. And F is 22.6. All right, so remember what I told you. If I'm looking for angle F, right, I have to have another angle and this side opposite that angle to use law of sines. So clearly this is going to be law of cosines. All right, now remember law of cosine, the formula is A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Remember what I told you, the angle and the side are always on the outside of the equation. The angle and the side are always on the outside of the equation, which means if I'm referring to this angle over here, or this triangle over here, I'm missing F, all right? So this would be cosine of F over here because that's unknown. And now I would have F squared. F squared is equal to the other two sides. What were the other two sides? E and F. E, is that right? Or E and what? E and D, E squared plus d squared. Notice it doesn't matter what order you put things. e squared plus d squared minus 2 ed cosine f. Hopefully you understand that. And now it's just a simple just plug in numbers in. All right. Now, if you're going to use the law of sines, remember that is just sine a over a equals sine b over b equals sine c over c. And then just cross multiply and divide. Number 29, let's see. I have angle A is 46, so I'm gonna put 46 in. Angle B is 105. Well, as soon as I have two angles, I just find the what? Yeah, you're gonna you know you're gonna do the law of sines, but C is 19.8. So the problem is I have to find angle C. So remember, make yourself a note. Anytime they give you two angles of a triangle, quickly find the third. And what's the third angle going to be? Come on. 29. Is that right? 29? 
51. Yeah, 29. Is everybody with me on that? The angles of a triangle add up to 180. And now we just say what? Sine of 29 over 19.8. Since we want A equals sine of 46 over A. And then, of course, we're cross multiplying and dividing. All right, I feel good about that. Same principle here. You got to determine what trig function you want to use. Then all of a sudden, I just decided not to draw the triangles for you. Same thing here. Didn't draw the triangles. Are they right triangles? We don't know, right? So we can't assume they are. All right. Now over here, they're just kind of drawing you some pictures, right? Some of the questions on the test will have pictures. Some of them will not. All right. So again, notice how they gave me two angles. Some kids had trouble with this because they didn't realize, go ahead and find the third angle. What's the third angle going to be? 70 degrees. Now, if I'm trying to find the height of the tree, even though it's tilted one side, we're just going to use what law here? Sign. Exactly. So we're looking at this angle and this known side. So we're going to have sine of 70 over 50 is equal to sine 17 over X. Everybody good with that? 36, what law are we going to use? Uh, cosine. Thank you very much. Law of cosine because it's side, side, side. Scrolling down the page. What can we use for 37? Uh, sine. Law of sine. Thank you very much. Now, in this case, proportions, right? Short leg over hypotenuse, short leg over hypotenuse. However you want to think about it. There's so many different ways to solve it. All right. Do we know anything about 40? Is that a right triangle, does it say? No, it's definitely not. All right. So we have angle Q and side Q. So that's a key. We're going to use what? Law. No, I'm sorry. That's not a Q, though. That's a letter. All right. So we have PQR, which means that that's side angle side. So I know that's going to be law of cosine. Okay, that's just drawing. Buildings are built at 90 degree angles. You with me on this? All right. So we can assume if we're talking about buildings, it's right angles. So again, you have to understand it's much easier if we have right triangles. We don't have to use law of sines or law of cosines. All right, we can just use Sakatoa. Another word problem, tricky, basic problem, basic trig. I say basic trig because all of these are what? Right triangles, all right? Now, again, Find the exact perimeter. Eight radical six is the diagonal. Okay, eight radical six is the diagonal. All right. Find the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Another proportion problem here for Y, another proportion. Now, when I got down here, I just kind of repeated some just for extra practice. All right, and there's another word problem. All right. All right, I, I feel like that's a pretty good review. Um, just all of the information that's on the test. All right, everything you have to know. All right, so tonight, all right, I, I would suggest you do as much as you possibly can. 
if you want to start out making a really great grade, I think you should do it all. And then in class tomorrow, I will try to get through as much as possible. Um, and then I'll probably ask you about how you feel if you want to do it on Thursday or Friday. All right. Most people want to procrastinate, but go home tonight and study. I'd rather get it over with. Do it on Thursday and be done with it. All right. But I don't mind giving you an extra day to study. All right. But please make sure you know how to do the trig. All right. Make sure you know how to use those, uh, your calculator. All right. Anybody have any questions? All right. So let's stop it right here. Thank you.